Hi everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to discuss the part 2 which is nothing but types of self excited DC motors. So here we are going to have two types of motors which are nothing but uh, separately excited and self excited. Okay. So we are having separately excited means input is given. Okay. So separately excited DC motors and second one is self excited DC motors. Okay. Self excited DC motors. Let's try to discuss in detail now. So already I told we are going to have two parts in an DC motor. One is rotor and next one is stator. This is nothing but the stator. Our rotor is made up of a winding where this winding is called armature winding. So where this armature is nothing but a set of conductors. Set of conductors will form this set of conductors is called coil. This set of coils are called winding. So the purpose of the armature is to develop the armature current at the output or resultant or the flux resultantly when you find out resultant armature flux. The next part is nothing but the stator. In the stator we are going to have the field winding. Okay. So this field winding here we are going to use an electromagnet by using an electromagnet that applying DC supply which is available at the stator and rotor in parallel. So due to this an magnetic field is produced. So this purpose of the field winding is also to produce uh, the flux okay so now let's try to see here so this equivalent circuit this armature we are going to show like this as aa and this field winding we are going to show it as a field winding starting end and ending end is a ff now let's try to discuss about separately excited dc so separately excited DC motor. So what is the separately excited DC motor? So the name itself is we are separately exciting the field winding and armature winding is also separately there. But you can see here so I am giving DC supply to the armature. So these are nothing but uh, brushes. So I am giving a supply winding I mean to the armature winding I am giving a separate supply and I am saying this voltage as armature voltage to this already you have a resistor and not neglected this so you have a resistor where this is called RA so the current is A this is the excitation given to which winding armature part armature part means which part rotor part now coming to the stator part now we have the field winding so here in this field winding so I am going to draw the field winding so this is our field winding. So the starting of the field winding is F, the another end is FF and here also we are going to apply some sort of a DC voltage where this is called field winding and the current in this winding is nothing but IF. So here also you may have this resistor and we call this uh, you may have a small resistor and generally I am neglecting this of low value this is also called field resistor. So here we are exciting the field separately. So this field is present in the stator and the armature is present in the rotor. So directly uh, we are not connecting them in parallel. Separately we are exciting the rotor part with the help of armature and separately we are exciting with the supply the stator also. That is why this is called a self excited DC motor. Now coming to the self excited DC motors. So self excited DC motors. So this self excited DC motors are again of uh, three types. So basically I am just drawing only the diagram. So first one this is nothing but uh, series self excited DC motor. Second one is uh, shunt self excited DC motor. Third one is uh, long shunt compound generator. Long long shunt 
compound water you see so when you come here what is this uh, long strand compound motor so here you can see here this uh, long compound motor so here we are going to have the diagram so equivalent uh, diagrams like this so here you are going to have a series motor so in series motor already i told you are having an dc supply this dc supply is directly applied to the armature winding and this is nothing but a series resistance and we are going to apply to the armature also this is nothing but starting end of armature this is ending terminal of the armature so this winding is nothing but a field winding and this is nothing but a armature resistance As you can see here positive negative positive negative and the negative is connected to the positive i can say these two are connected in series and same supply is given to the both on single supply sufficient therefore i can say this is connected in series connection here the field winding and armature winding so the armature is present in rotor part this field winding is present in stator part both are connected in series therefore these sort of motors are called series motors and coming to the second category which is nothing but self excited shunt dc motors so when you come to the shunt excited dc motors you are having an dc supply and you are exciting the armature we are having the armature and here we are having this is nothing but z z z field winding so this is nothing but uh, field winding having field resistance and this is nothing but the armature a a you can see here the 220 volts dc supply is given to the armature and the same voltage is also given to the field winding you can say here so same dc supply is given to the armature winding as well as the field winding i can say the voltage is same i can say this are connected in parallel connection that's why it is called parallel connection is also called shunt okay so now the total current i am marking here it is i the current drawn by the armature winding is i a the current drawn by the field winding is i f if you apply kirchhoff's current law the total current i is equal to i a plus if so this is called the resultant current developed by an dc shunt motor in the case of a self excited next coming to the next one which is nothing but long shunt compound motor okay so third one is long shunt compound motor when you come to this uh, connections so here we are applying an dc supply and here we are directly using an armature we are going to connect this nothing but applied voltage this is nothing but armature resistance this is nothing but starting end of armature winding this is nothing but uh, armature here this is nothing but available in rotor and now we are going to have the field winding of longer length so this is nothing but field winding so this is nothing but the field winding so you can see here the current here it is ia and here current is if and therefore this sort of you can see here completely it is available in parallel to the field i am going to call this as a long shunt if you use short turns then it's called short shunt so this is like uh, the dc supply is available at the both ends of the field winding as well as the armature that's why this is called shunt connection and the length of the field winding is long that's why it's called long shunt compound series i mean parallel so this field winding is present in stator part this armature winding is present in rotor part stator plus rotor part we we'll try to constitute our dc motor so this is all about eh, the separately excited self excited motors and already we have been derived the relationship for back emf as well as the torque equations now let's try to understand the speed control 
of these motors okay so actually coming to the speed control we have two methods speed control of dc motor directly i am going with the uh, experimentation part when you come to this uh, experimentation part and you are discussing this experimentation part so here we are going to have the three parts so the positive supply is connected to line and the next part the field winding we are connected to an rheostat and here you are having an we are keeping it in minimum and we are connecting to the field winding and here you have the three point starter with armature and here we are having an rheostat and this rheostat we have to keep it in the maximum position and then we are having the one more winding so this resultant winding i am going to rs and i am going to draw the equivalent symbol for this so here i am going to have the armature this is a a and this is the negative terminal so now this is nothing but the field winding f ff so this is nothing but the three point starter so by using the three point starter we are going to start our motor and this initially coming to this position this generally should be in r minimum at the time of uh, starting so this should be in maximum at the time of uh, running so here this should be in maximum position at the type of uh, starting and this should be in this position at the time of uh, running okay so now let us try to solve it when you come here the formula here we are going to have current i is equal to v by r in the armature how much current has to flow maximum current has to flow so therefore r should be minimum so this is the case whenever it is in running but in the case of starting what happens is current ia is equal to v by r so if higher current flows what will happen the armature may damage so we have to restrict the flow of current so at the initially it has to take only lower current then what should be the position of the rheostat this should be maximum if resistance is maximum minimum amount of current okay so here you can see here so here to here the length is higher therefore the resistance is maximum if resistance is maximum lower amount of current will flow and the motor will start slowly so coming to here how to identify the position is uh, this is the length active length of the rheostat r is equal to rho l by a so here this here the supply is given it is flowing throughout the length length is greater automatically resistance is greater that's why at this position you are having higher length automatically this is having a maximum resistance if it is maximum resistance current is minimum at the starting armature current is minimum so that's why at the starting you have to keep the rheostat in which position this position and slowly you vary this rheostat and bring it to minimum when you bring it to the minimum uh, here how it is minimum is uh, r is equal to rho l by a so now what you are going to do you are moving from this position to this position now length has been when you come it when it comes to this position when your the rheostat comes to this position length is minimum automatically resistance is minimum whenever the resistance is minimum therefore higher amount of armature current will flow and the motor will try to rotate as per the required torque why because torque formula is flux into armature current higher amount of armature current is flowing higher amount of torque is produced now coming to the field winding so here the field winding starting it should be in minimum okay so minimum means length should be minimum if length is minimum resistance is 
minima. So supply is given here and directly we are taking the tapping here. Now this is the minimum position. Therefore length is minimum, resistance is minimum. I here also you take the formula I field current is equal to V by R. What is the position of the resistance? The position of the resistance is minimum. If resistance is minimum, maximum field current has to flow. The maximum field current will flow is only 1 ampere. If the field current is maximum, then only it can produce required amount of flux, then only what will produce torque. So definitely we have to excite the field poles. We have to excite the field winding, then only what is produced, flux is produced, then only the interaction takes place. So initially we need to produce required amount of, we have to produce the magnetic field, that's why the field current should be maximum. The field current should be maximum means at the starting of our motor, this should be minimum position. But when you come to the running, so we have to vary the position and we have to bring to the dotted line. So in this condition, here the tapping is there. Now what is the length? The length is maximum. If the length is maximum, what is the formula we have? R is equal to rho L by A. If the length is maximum, now the position of resistance is what? Maximum. So current, the field current IF is equal to V by R maximum. If resistance is maximum, how much amount of field current will flow? Less. So already the resultant magnetic field has been established through the field. So if you keep it in maximum also, minimum field, I mean minimum field current will flow. Why? Because already flux is available, there is no issue. So therefore, the DC motor will run with the required speed. Generally, how we select here is this is of 50 ohm rheostat and 5 amperes. This is of 200 ohm rheostat of 1.5 ampere. So this is how to select the speed control. So here the speed control is very tough. Okay. So when you see here this rheostat method of speed control when you are having self. So this is for speed control of self-excited. So this is the speed control of self-excited DC motors. So now when you come to the concept, so this sort of rheostat control method is not an feasible. So this sort of rheostat control is not an feasible. So here we want to replace these rheostats with an DC choppers. Okay. So we want to replace this rheostat control with an DC chopper. The purpose of chopper is also well known. So we are having an fixed DC and we need to convert this DC into an variable DC. So when you convert this fixed DC into an variable DC to using an pot, so we can uh, inject this uh, device here and it can control the output voltage automatically armature oscillates. Okay. And uh, here also remove this uh, field rheostat and keep an uh, DC to DC controller. Better we have the speed control characteristics. Uh, so rather than this self-excited, we have better speed control in the case of an uh, separately excited. In the case of a separately excitation, so this excitation what we are giving here, so this excitation we have to give through separately through one positive one, one negative. So separately if you excite, so separately you can control the excitation and separately you can control the armature current. So if you do it separately, automatically you can have better speed control. This is how we are performing the speed control of DC motors. Slowly listen the video once or twice, you can understand the concepts where you are unable to understand. Okay. So this is about uh, separate excited and this is about self excited series shunt, long shunt and this is how the speed control we have uh, three point starter line jet. This is an experimental setup what we are already doing in the lab. So you have the field winding and this field rheostat and this armature rheostat armature winding and we are controlling. So armature all the time this should be in maximum then minimum current then the maximum minimum current will flow. So here this should be in minimum therefore maximum field current flows. Slowly we have to move this maximum resistance to minimum. Slowly you have to move the minimum resistance to maximum then better speed control is possible. If you want better speed control you try to directly go for separately excited and this way of rheostat control is not so proper that's why we have to use an uh, DC chopper in electric vehicle DC motor applications. If you feel the content is uh, useful to you please like our channel and please give an valuable like and please share the content with your friends and if you have any doubts let me know in comment section and please kindly subscribe to the channel. So your subscription is more valuable and please try to motivate the remaining also to subscribe where this will help you to give more knowledge on electric vehicle and moreover this is a free channel. 
so you don't need to pay any money so since this is a free channel so this will be a supporting to make us do more videos useful to the students for the benefit of their career so thank you for watching we'll meet in the next video thank you for listening patiently